Welcome to Buddha at the Gas Pump. My name is Rick Archer, and my guest this week is Ellie Ruzdar. And Ellie lives on Long Island, but was originally from Iran, where I spent three interesting months um, back in the, I guess it was 1980s, and leaving just a day or two before the Shah did. Um, I was with a, a group of TM teachers who were trying to demonstrate that large groups of people meditating could actually create uh, peaceful influence on their surroundings and on the society. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if we did or not, but it was interesting meditating all day and then going up on the roof of our building to watch the banks and liquor stores burn. Yes, <laughs> yes, amazing, amazing. yes, yeah. yes. Wild times. And we'd, we'd take walks out on the street and people would, you know, here we are, these white guys walking around. People would say, are you crazy? Get off the street. You know, you're going to get yourself killed. <laughs> we, we felt safe, but I'm sure we were naive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so it was interesting. But yeah. Yeah. So uh, so thanks, Ellie. I've I've been listening to uh, I listened to several hours of your interviews and and talks over the last week, and um, enjoyed those. And and those listening to this interview will get a chance to catch up on what I heard. But um, one thing I didn't hear too much in all that, and didn't even see on your website, although I I looked through it, was an account of you know how you kind of got to where you are in terms of your spiritual orientation to things so so tell us that story oh, it's a long long story that's Rick. okay we have time I, first of all I just want to thank you for having me here oh you're welcome and this because the reason I accepted this interview is because this path was so long mm. and hard but so difficult mm -hmm. and I didn't have any teacher hmm. no teacher no guru no one to help so that's why I just want to share this story with the people sure I'm sure there are so many people are there who are listening right now mm -hmm. and are in the same exact boat yeah but I just the message is it's a light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> and it's that's not an I oncoming wanna... train <laughs> no no it's not it's not there's right. an end there's an end into this path yeah there's an end mm -hmm. so um if I want to start from the beginning, uh, Rick, when I was, I, I was born in a very middle class family in Iran, as you mentioned. I have been bo born and raised there till age 23. Uh -huh. um, when I was a child, at, this is around age five or six, when I was alone in the room by myself, especially when I was all by myself, you know, just playing or doing whatever I was doing, all of a sudden, I see myself as this vision. It's just vision. It's not a thing. It's just looking at this body, especially in the hands, especially I was looking at my hands. I was absolutely not associated whatsoever to this body. Mm. I mean, and I was so petrified. I was just looking, and the only question I would ask is, in Persian, Mankia, who am I? Mm. It was scary, because I, I was not getting any answer, and all I was feeling here is empty. There is nothing in here, nothing whatsoever, but it's looking at the body. This body be does not feel at all belong to me. I'm just looking at it, but I'm absolutely not associated with that. This vision was so profound. It just is looking. It's, it's an invisible vision, I could call it. Invisible. And uh, I, would, I would be so sweating. All my face was so scared. I would run out of the room. I would go to a place that there are people there. And then when there are people there, then I feel a little bit safe. Then I feel back. Somehow it's like I'm going back again. I could not share this with anyone. I knew this was not not norm. I knew it. Something from inside, I knew it. This is not norm. Did it happen over and over again? Absolutely. Anytime I was quiet by myself, mm -hmm. the vision was coming out. I was not identifying with the body. This was not me. Did you kind of fight it because you didn't like it? You, no, you tried, tried to stop scared. it? No, I was scared. No, scared. But if it scared because you so much, wouldn't you try to kind of stop it from happening? No, no. no. Well, the stopping was getting up and leave. Ah, uh, going to be but, with people. Yeah, going out, going out. 
and um, but this was but but then this who am I was there because I didn't get an answer there I was I felt this emptiness there was nothing here and um, that who am I that was my answer that was the question just was there I know it was in the back burner always so as I was growing up till age 10 and 11 this was on and off there until finally I think this I this vision closed closed mm-hmm. up and this body was totally accepted somehow it just I, okay I am this body but I knew something is not right in here you know what I'm saying I knew and uh, so this was my question as I was growing up like everybody else I, I'm gonna bring a metaphor here that to, to, to show you how I felt it felt like imagine you are a king with you are a king of this whole entire continent and all of a sudden you wake up and they they dress you as a beggar and they give you this begging ball and to go into this world and try to become try to become that so that was the feeling mm. i knew this was not this is this was not me i, I just knew it this doesn't feel comfortable but it feels like this was given I cannot do anything about it I have to accept this so I accepted it but I knew this was not it Hmm. so I was I took the begging ball and I went around the world and I try to become just become and become everything become a good daughter for the family become uh, educated, a good student. I happen to be a very, very good high achiever, very good student, become a good student, and then finally uh, be accepted in uh, university, which is in Iran is very difficult. Every hundred th- for every hundred thousand people who apply for for, for college, only ten percent would be accepted. And I I achieved that. Went to college in Iran, got my bachelor's degree, and then for, for continue our education. I, I decided to come to United States in 1979. The day that Shah lived, uh, leave Iran. We, we we left Iran also the next oh, day. We might have so, been on the same flight almost. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think I left about two days before that. <laughs> but that that's meant the time. So we, I came to United States for again for continuing my education again to become become. I was just becoming. Um, so um, then uh, in here I uh, I met my husband. I got married. He's Iranian, as you saw him today. I uh, and then I said, "Oh, if I found," I mean, and then always there is something missing in here. It's like a huge hole, huge. And no matter how much I was becoming, this hole was getting bigger, hmm. not smaller. It was just getting bigger. Was it so, like a constant awareness of that, or just would come up in your quiet moments? And- pretty much all the time I was not at ease mm. I was not comfortable in in this outfit right I was not this this was not comfortable so and then I said okay it may be if I find the love of my life love is the answer we know the love is the answer so this man I met him I fall in love I mean th- I thought at the time this was love this was really love a person to a person so we got married that was not it that was not it having the children same thing some everybody else is going I don't want to take a lot of time on that but it was not it having two beautiful children my daughter is now is grown up my son is now in college something didn't fit I was in uh, I, I after my master's degree I went and I started uh, teaching in a Catholic school as a high school teacher in math mathematics I was very very good in that I have I'm good in transferring the knowledge to the students, I was good. I loved that. That was my passion. In the class, I was I was so myself. I feel so great. Um, but again, the thing that was missing is always here. And until uh, at uh, 1995, uh, this body got very very sick. I got breast cancer, and I have to deal with that. That was one of the turning points. That something hit here. I had to take care of that 
which I did. I went through the whole entire thing, the surgery and everything, and I put that behind myself. And uh, but that was uh, something that it made me again go not only to take care of the body. Now I start to taking watching the body, taking care of the body a little bit more, more exercise, better eating, all that. But then going now curve back in. That's that's the, that's the time that started. About two years after, I became volunteer of uh, American Cancer Society, and ever since I'm helping all those people in Long Island who had breast cancer. That was uh, that was the time of my life, dealing, interacting with people, going to their homes, giving them hope, showing them that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. This is a ta cancer survivor. This body. So it was just fun to do that as a as a side. I thought that's good. That is, that's it. Serving people, it would be something that maybe I need to again fill that gap, that hole. That was good, but that was not it. That was not it. I mean, in this, it's just this becoming is not it. it I, I knew this becoming is not it. it. This is not a path of becoming. So, um, so after a while, um, after the cancer. I decided to change my career because I was commuting a long, long distance, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, "So maybe that <laughs> something close." And uh, that's that was. <laughs> the dog saying it's time for breakfast. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so you want to go take care of him? No, no, my wife will take care of it. We can keep going. Okay. Pe people who listen to these shows are very well aware of our dogs and cats. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I love them. I yeah. love them so dearly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yes, so after all this, I said, you know, this is, um, again, this is something missing. When I changed my career, I was in information technology for a few years. Again, mm -hmm. I became a manager, <clears throat> very good at, at what I was doing, mm -hmm. with the dealing with the people, interacting. And then at the point, I said, okay, I heard about um, energy and healing and Reiki. So I found someone, some Reiki master, <clears throat> excuse me, in Long Island, and uh, she g gave me attunement. So I, you know, I learned Reiki level two. So she showed me how to do it with hands and all that. Um, one day, I said, okay, now that I learned this, <clears throat> let me. She, she showed me you can give energy from to, from the distance mm -hmm. or to the picture of some somebody or all that. So here I am. Okay, I said, you know, let me just give energy to my sister. So I, I was sitting in my living room, and I'm holding my hands up like that on the, on her picture, and all of a sudden my hands starts bouncing up and down, hmm. up and down, right. up and down, and 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 speed was phenomenal, out of control. Like hmm. it was like I can tell you, it was so fast that I feel that my shoulders now is going to just pull out. Wow. So I take my hands off off the picture. So I just hold it like this. And I, I just waited. And then I said, okay, I'm going to try again. So I put back my hands back. Now this time around was going this way. Mm -hmm. Like this. For and those listening on the audio, she's going back and this, forth this rather than up and down. Right. Yeah. It was okay. like, like this, but the, the speed, I cannot describe that. Huh. This was so much that it was so out of control. It was so painful. It was like my hands are like falling off, falling off. So I take my hands off, and all of a sudden, I felt this energy was flowing from the bottom of my belly, mm -hmm. circling around just like this and coming up and up and up and up and up and going to my head and my shoulders start it feels like you're in a roller coaster that's how it was moving and then this chest my chest was just expanded so much and then it was just like moving and going on and on and on and as I was looking at my hands all of a sudden my hands became like this mm -hmm. I felt this like a football, I mean soccer ball, 
like yeah. it feels like a soccer ball. And then this energy was moving in between my hands. When you say like this, uh, for the benefit of those just listening to the audio, she's holding her hands as though she's holding a soccer ball in, exactly, her, in exactly, her hands. Yeah. Exactly, like this. Mm -hmm. And then it was going in, in, in between, in between mm -hmm. my hands. So powerful. It's like a ball moving. And I was looking at it. I, I didn't know what to do with this ball. <laughs> I just twist my head. I go like this. Uh, put the ball <laughs> on your head. Yes, and I let go, and I let go. Uh -huh. And this was going on and on and on. I don't know how long. I don't know how long. Until it quieted down. It quieted down. And then all of a sudden, as it quieted down, I, I raised my hand, and I noticed that this left hand all of a sudden is moving as I'm going towards any chakra, any any. Any chakra in my body, if I mm -hmm. hold my hand, it starts, see, it's like, like this. It starts vibrating. Mm -hmm. Okay? Very powerful. <laughs> Very powerful. So, okay, I said, I sat down. <laughs> I don't know how long was it. So I, I just didn't know what happened to me. I really never had any experience like this. So this Reiki master told me that you can give energy to the loved ones, to the people who deceased or a anybody. So there are two people were in my mind so powerfully, so strongly that I want to give energy. One was Mother Teresa. Hmm. So I, here I am, I raise my hands and with a distance I start giving her energy. And these two hands were going off the wall. They were going woo, like moving and moving and shaking and moving. And throughout this whole energy, it was like that. And then, then it slowed down, it quiets down. And that was it. And the next one, I said, the, the person that I always, this is the love of my heart, was Jesus. Oh. I said, and I am not even Christian, but I, Jesus is, has a very special place in my heart because of the, his messages. Mm -hmm. So I start giving energy to, the, to Jesus. Again, same thing. Again, hands were moving out, and I said, you know what, I have to call my husband. I have to show him what's going on with me. So I called, he was downstairs in, a, in his office. I, he came up, he sat down, I said, look, I want to give energy to your brother. His brother was deceased, very tragically deceased back in Iran. He said, okay, so as I was mentioning his name, and I was giving energy, my hands were acting like that again. And I was watching, and he was watching, we have no idea what was going on. So I remember when this energy was ended, he just looked at me. He didn't say one word. Hmm. He did not say one word. He just walked away. Hmm. I think he was very scared. Very scared. What did he say later on? No, well, one <laughs> you want to hear that? <laughs> sure. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> why, can't you l l why can't you be like other people. Ah, he wants you to be normal, yeah. Exactly. I said, what do you mean by that? He says, normal. Like <laughs> other people, like your friends. Does anybody of your friend do anything like that? <laughs> I said, I have no, no answer. I have no answer. I don't know what to say. Yeah. So, I called the Reiki master. I said, look, I don't know what you did to me. Is this attunement you gave me or something? I had this kind of experience. She says, oh my goodness, that's Kundalini awakening. Mm -hmm. I said, I have no idea what you mean by that. She, she says, okay, um, that is very powerful. And what I want you to do is you give me energy because I have this chronic pain in my back mm -hmm. that I want you to give energy. So he came to my home and she lay down and I said, look, somehow I know I don't have to touch you. I just do it from the distance. She says, I don't know where do you got this idea, whatever that is go ahead do it so I gave energy to her from a distance okay and she felt it very very strongly she says the pain is gone the pain is completely gone she didn't feel it anything at all she says this is fantastic you this Kundalini opens up has a lot to do with all this energy so you can do a lot with this energy and healing so come and join us and all that stuff so I am um, I said, okay, so I was reflecting upon that. I knew a woman, in, in an Iranian woman, she's in California. She was into also energy. She wrote a lot of books about that. I contacted her. I said, look, this is 
something like this happened. I explained to her all that. She mentioned, she says, okay, I want you to close your eyes and scan my body and tell me which part of my body has problem. I said, I have no idea what you're saying. She says, just, just follow what I just said. Close your eyes. Picture my body. Scan me from the head to toe. Tell me which part is problem. I said, okay, I just followed. I close my eyes and I'm scanning her body. And I'm coming down. And then as I'm, on, I'm reaching to her throat, I feel my energy, my hands shake, start different kind of vibration, feel different kind of thing. So and then I go down, all of a sudden in her stomach I feel something. And then all the way down to her legs. So she says, So what did you find? I said I said something in the in your throat and something in your stomach. She says, Absolutely is right. Mm -hmm. They found a tumor in my in my um, throat and she has this um, problem with um, thyroid. Thyroid, yeah. And uh, she said, last night, me and my husband, we went out to dinner. I don't know what we ate. We both have problems with our stomach. Give me, give me energy to my stomach. So I start giving energy to her stomach. She says, can I ask you a favor? I said, yes. She says, can you give energy to my husband? Because he's sick also. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes in, and I'm giving energy to him. And that's how it started. Hmm. She said, you can do this. Now you can scan people from this distance and all that. After Kundalini, the only difference I made was not just the hand. This My left arm was like that, very sensitive. And my ears became very, very sensitive, very sharp with the noises and all. Mm. That's all. Nothing else. I, I never saw, I never felt anything else change, at, you know, feeling-wise. Then I start... Um, with my friends and people who know me and all that, I start giving energy from the distance and also scanning people. Same thing. I, I would scan people. They would say, I said, I feel something in your stomach, in your lower, you know, stomach. And they said, yes, I had some problem with my intestinal and had surgery and all that. It, you, it, you can feel the different vibration, even from the distance, you know, you can tell. So, this was going on and on, and I was giving energy from distance for a long time. But I noticed that whenever I give energy to two or three people in a row, somehow I feel such pain and tiredness. Like mm. it feels like you have two bricks all of a sudden on my chest. That's like it, how it was draining you or something. Very much so. Yeah. Very much. Which what it should not supposed to be like that. You're right. supposed to be channeling this energy, yeah. not giving your own energy. Right. So I was talking to my cousin back in Europe. She said uh, he knows a guru that um, is a monk that um, he is very familiar with his energies and stuff. So he can help you on this. Go And, and, and he accidentally he, came, he was coming to New York City. So I went to visit him, uh, to this monk in, in the city. Anyone I would have heard of? I cannot. I don't want to mention his name. He's not that famous. Okay. I don't know if he wants his name to be sure. revealed. No problem. But he was a chiropractic doctor, oh. mm -hmm. which was also a monk. So as soon as I opened, they opened the door. I went to him. He, he was sitting there with this orange robe that you know the the, the robes that they have. Sure. Yeah. He was looked. He looked at me, and I said to him, "I said, I think I have this Kundalini problem, <laughs> whatever that was." He looked at me, he smiled, he said, I can see that. He said, the energy, the way it's supposed to come up, it has to go straight up and, you know, flow proper, properly. Somehow, because of my, the way my spine is, this energy trapped in the middle, mm -hmm. and instead of, instead of the, and the color changes, the color instead of being just a light, uh, like a yellowish white, it was like an orangish, orange red. That's the color he was seeing. That. So That's is why that why you were feeling drained when you did the healing I work? Because your kundalini was blocked. Something it like blocked. Something was blocked. It was mm. not functioning. So he said he put he put me on the floor, and he cracked my back, mm. two ways, and the neck also. It was cracked. I could hear the noise. Mm -hmm. He was not even touching me. He, he they they put a, uh, like a. Mm, what kind of like a cloth or like what was that something was on my he put it on my back so he doesn't touch me directly right so 
he he just did that. But and he was he was physically touching you, physically, but th yes. through a, through a cloth. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Okay. Through a cloth. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I and then he said, "That's it. Now this energy is flowing. I see the color." Mm -hmm. I said, so I don't feel it. I didn't feel anything. So he said, "The color is now white. You mm -hmm. know, it's like yellowish white." So, but he said something beautiful to me that day. He said, "My sister." This Kundalini awakening is a blessing for you. Do not give energy to people. Because I have seen people get into this and that in that pump their self of self and ego so yeah. strongly and they lose themselves in this path. Mm -hmm. Although they do service, but they are lost. They feel like there's something special. Exactly. Right. So if I were you, she said, I would, he said, he's, I go within and I find, try to find who am I. Mm. And I said, well, yes, that was always my question. So I came home, Rick, that was that. That was that. And the job that I have, this was a management of a company. I said, you know what? I'm, I had it. I just have to know what, what, who am I? I, I, just, I put this in a back burner for a long time. It's long enough. So that's it. I called them up. I told them I'm quitting my job. I came back home. And I went back to this naturally. Naturally, I think this body felt to go back to the cocoon. And the meditation started. Strong, powerful meditation. This was not any specific kind of meditation. I didn't follow any specific guru or teacher. One thing I heard that I know it helped me. That is from very, very famous um, Indian guru. Again, I don't want to mention the name because I'm not following this person. All I heard was just methodology of meditation with open eyes and with closed eyes. All he was, paying, was mentioning is paying attention to this observer, to this watcher. So even, so when I, when I did that, I was just paying attention to the observer, to this awareness who is here. But I, at the time, I didn't know who was this awareness. All I knew it was, I have to pay attention to the awareness. That's all. So I went back to this cocoon. And days after days, Rick, I was in meditation for hours. I mean, sitting down, sitting down was not was not cutting for me because it was so painful. I couldn't sit for a long time. Because so I, of the Kundalini it was painful? I no, no, it, it was so uncomfortable because the duration of this meditation was so long. It was not 20 minutes, half an hour. This was like three hour meditation. Yeah. So just sitting as a lotus position. Too uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable in my right. back. So I would lay down like mm -hmm. a dead body on the floor mm -hmm. or in bed, no pillow, straight. So after like three or four hours, Rick, my whole body was like dead body. Then I would come out of the meditation. My arms were just, oh my God, it was so painful because I was holding it like this for longest time. It was all painful. You were trying to maintain a, a still was, position? Absolutely. Okay. This stillness has, had to be there. For some reason, I knew that this was it. Mm -hmm. Stillness, awareness. Now, this was the most important thing in this path for me because as I was meditating it was healing meditation for me was healer all those memories was coming all those emotions were coming up but it was coming up it feels like coming up to the to me to the presence of me to the presence of I am mm -hmm. and it would come and slowly slowly all these stories of me as a separate sense of self that sense of separate me with the story was coming up and was dissolving mm. coming up and dissolving and the emotions sometimes there is a memories where something was happening and they're all and I would just be watching it watching it allowing this to happen and it happened and it just cleaned up I, I don't know how to describe it. it was like purifying it was so healing it is, and it, the wisdom mm -hmm. is amazing. The knowing, the knowing. There is this, and I was so um, acquainted with this nothingness, with this emptiness, 
I know this is not emptiness. This is absolutely fullness. So, so unlike when you were a little girl and you would have that experience and be fearful, now you were sort of welcoming that experience and kind of befriending it and not being fearful anymore. True, but that was the vision. There is this vision. Was it here? Was not the vision. This was just a witness. Mm -hmm. This was not just like that. I explained that to you because that vision later on opened up. Oh. But this was not that. This was okay. just a presence, which is healing. Mm -hmm. The presence is healing. Is here. So, as I was going through this meditation for you, for, and my husband was petrified because he <laughs> saw me on the floor sometimes, like yeah. flat dead. <laughs> Black dead, and he would come up and he would hold me and he would just try to wake me up honestly he, he thought that something you know he was very concerned about this and you and you wouldn't respond no, no. didn't you explain I, to him I what was, you were no, doing I would, say, go away. I would say go away I'm fine you know I would just let make sure that yeah. he, he you know he's he just want to make sure that I'm okay I, right. I'm not you know. yeah so, so but you weren't being a normal housewife that's for no, sure no <laughs> not, not at all not at no. all um, so, so Rick, I found a friend from a distance. She she lives in Canada, and uh, she became my friend. She was also doing the same thing, meditation and all that. One day, I went to the beach. I had a very nice walk in the beach. I sat in the beach. I meditated in the beach. No problem. I was so in peace. I came home. I was sitting in the couch something told me that I have to now go meditate and again I feel that energy again similar very similar was coming up I don't know what it was so I said okay I'm gonna go lay down I went upstairs in bed lay down and I closed my eyes into meditation after like maybe few minutes all of a sudden this wave of energy again was coming from the bottom the the belly part of me was like a wave this time. It was not like a circular like that. It was a wave and was coming up to the, my chest, all the way to my head, holding up, holding my breath. No breath coming and going. Nothing whatsoever. Taking over the whole entire body, the head. And this no breath was going on for maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, and then wave go back. And this was going up and down and up and down for for an hour. And the joy and ecstasy and, and uh, it's just amazing. All of my every cell of the body, not just my belly and my heart, it's not just that. I'm talking about every cell in my my fingernails, finger toe, fingers, every cell in here, in here was feeling that, that joy. Even in my mouth, I was feeling all of my gums, every cell of the gum is feeling that joy. Mm. That's how it was. Amazing. And, and it just the most powerful, satisfying, joyful thing ever happened. And I was... In, I was in it. I was. I did. I was not a watcher. I was not a aware being. To no, no, no. That is gone. That is gone. This, 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 this love is so powerful. It would take over everything. There is no you. There is no nothing going on. So, as it finished, I said, "Oh my God, who, who can I share this one now? I don't." <laughs> so, I called a friend in Canada. She says yes. She says she has the exact same same experience, and she described that to me. It's not that okay, I know it. It's not. She gave me the description, how it was, how it started, how it. So we knew something was going on. So I I was so glad that I was not the only one. Okay, so I went to do some research to find out what is this, what is this thing, in in meditation because meditation to me was always a quiet place, silence, nothing like this. So I went to, to internet. I, the only thing I found, honestly, was this Indian lady in India who had this thing going on in her, and people were celebrating around her. And they said that the divine is touching her. And I saw her, she, same exact 
thing was going on with her. The, the energy was coming, going to her head, and she was intoxicated, and then goes down. People were dancing around her, giving her something to drink, and she, they said, this, this is a divine. That's what I saw. Nothing else. I said, okay, this, and I didn't share this with my husband, because if I do, I, I knew it just, again, another thing is going to happen, so forget it. This thing was so powerful, Rick, for about two and a half years. Oh. I was going there, and I, this experience, this, this is just amazing. So I said, like that, every day for two and a half years, you would lie not down? Not every like day. That. No, this was very powerful. You can't, you couldn't do this every day. Oh, okay. You, I mean, this is, you can do this only maybe once a week, if you uh -huh. can. Because the, the energy of it is so powerful. It's so, you expect, it's like you feel like you're, you're going to explode. This but the, chest, the times when you would do it, you would do it when you felt the, the urge to do it yes, coming, coming on, yes, right? Yes, it's, coming it's on. Almost, almost like you didn't really have a choice. You has, I got to go do it. Yes, yes, right. that's how it was. Like something <laughs> is coming on, I have to go lay down. You know, right. that's how. It was. So, this was again. I was falling in love with this. This is mm -hmm. my love affair now. This is there is this me, Ellie, and this thing, whatever this thing is, is a divine. Is this is how it was? Me and the divine are going and this merge. That's this is what's happening. Let me it, just in like, interject a question here. During as this was happening. Not during the actual lying down, but throughout your your 24-hour you know daily routine, um, was 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 your normal life disrupted by the changes that were taking place? I mean, you had normal sort of relations with your kids and your husband and your friends and your shopping and all that stuff was ordinary. Yes, yes. I try to pretend the image, that image, that facade, that role, never changed. I okay. try to not to reveal that. Right. And it's very easy not to. You, you can just do it. You can just do carry it. carry on. It's your yeah. little secret. How can I say? <laughs> Honestly, that was yeah, my, yeah. that's what, I only, the only person knew that was my friend in Canada. She right. knew. So whenever so I So you didn't talking, discuss this stuff with your husband? You didn't no, tell him what you were going no, through? No, right. he would not understand that. Okay. But this is not like, this love, uh, Rick, is not like a romantic love. It's not like that. that right. That's this over ambi This is, this is it. This is it. This is, I thought this is the ultimate. This is that you can't have anything above that. I mean, mm. the joy. I mean, the joy of this is just overwhelming, it, and you get so hooked. You get so hooked to this. This is like lo my love affair. Honestly, that was it. So you thought so, you were just gonna do this all your life? All my life. I said this is this is. The, I am arrived. I thought th that's it. This is mm. it. There is Ellie who had this love affair, and this is me. And whenever I feel like going. But then when, I, when, the, when the experience was ending, I felt that sense of separation. Mm. And this, gets, this love affair gets so intense, Rick, that you, no matter, even if you stay there, sit there for 24 hours, you still feel separated. And this separation is not good, was not satisfying for me. I cannot continue this. I cannot be separated from this. So, I don't know what's going on with me, but this, this is, this, this something is not right. I, I, I'm, I cannot be separated from this. Mm -hmm. And I feel separated. And that was giving me pain. Again. I want to be 24 hours here, but I couldn't be here. I wish I was in Himalayas by myself, but I, I couldn't do it. I had a husband. I have a family. So, what, what, what I was, again, it, this was like, then there was this feeling of bewilderness. It's like something... Everything is, re, uh, is, when I was looking at everything, everything is a miracle, all of a sudden. It, this butterfly, oh my God, I was, it's like the first time I saw a butterfly, ever in my life. I was sitting in my backyard, again, si sitting and watching, this grasshopper came. I was looking at, oh my God, look at these legs, look at this face, look at this face, look at that, that kind of a thing, bewilderness. So I said, you know, I really have to know what's going on. So I, something came to me that there was this Sufi mystic in Iran. His name is Attar. Attar is very, very old mystic, even prior to Rumi. Mm -hmm. He came up with this infrastructure in this path, path of self-realization, that he says he divided it in, in about seven steps or seven stages. 
that when I read that and I saw those seven stages, I said, that's it. You know, I need, this should be in front of me I'm, as, a, as a model because I don't have anything else in front, in front of me. And I'm going to use that um, in, as a model. So this is how he said that. And I knew that I was in the path. He said, step one is the burning desire. In this path, you have to have this passionate desire to know the truth. That has to be there as a number one. And he emphasized that so much on that. Stage two is love. He said love. And I knew that this is the love he's talking about. That you feel. That's, that's the love. That's a love affair he's talking about. Stage three, he says, some sort of recognition after love. It's recognition stage. Stage four. Recognition of what? Do you want to elaborate on truth, that? Or? Of the truth. Recognition. Okay. I will tell you that. Okay. Because when I, ha I was having this experience, I was recognizing there is something esoteric in here. There is something in going on. I don't know what it is, but it is something. It is, it is something uh, different. It's not normal like normal thing that people are going through. There is something is in here. I don't, know what, I don't want to call it anything, but there is something in here. Mm -hmm. So that was the recognition he's talking about. It's not enlightenment, really. It's not awakening yet. Then he's talking about bewilderness, which I was there. When Be I, bewilderment, I think you mean. Bewilderment, yes. Right, that's right, the right. bewilderment. That means anything is a miracle when right. you look at anything and everything. And, but, but also in this state, you are confused. You, yeah. are, you don't know who you are yet. You know there's something is going on, but you still are so confused. That is a very, very difficult state. I was there for a while, you know, and, and I experienced that. After this, he said, unity consciousness. That's the state five, unity consciousness. Six is die in God. Dying and, in God. And unity consciousness means in, elaborate? I would, I, would, I would elaborate in a minute. Okay, in, sorry. Unity means just the vision change. The vision, that vision that I had at age six, mm -hmm. the vision change which I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. That is unity consciousness. Then he says, die in love. Stage six. Stage seven, resurrected as God. Hmm. Oh my goodness. I just said, this is it. I'm going to put that in front of me and just looking at it and see where I am. I mean, I... So I, I'm going and living my life and just going and bewilderness was a bewilderment, you said, is there <laughs> for a long time and I'm going to my life. Again, meditation. Meditation is still going on because it's still I did I was not aware who I was who I was, what's going on. And even there's a better word than bewilderment, because bewilderment usually means confusion, but I think you mean like just fascination or uh w with the mystery, with the Exactly with the sort of, you know, almost being in awe of the uh, divine intelligence that you see displayed in things. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. But it was confusing though. It was uh -huh. not clear. It was not, it was blurry. It okay. was so blurry. Right. So, and I knew that was not the place I want to be. That was a very uncomfortable place to be. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Rick, it was not, you don't want to be here. It is so unclear. So, in one experience, again, I just had to meditate, go through this love affair. In one experience that I have, this was years ago. I don't even know what year was it, 2004, I think it was. As I was having this experience, there was this me as Ellie going and having this love affair, okay? This, this is how it happens. The, I noticed that the experiencer and the experience, <clears throat> they are not two. This is one. Mm -hmm. And in this experience, <clears throat> that sense of separate self, all of a sudden, like this. Just collapsed. Oh, collapsed. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the love affair, okay, all it was left 
was this awareness, this existence. And, and this existence, what happened was all of a sudden it feels like, all of a sudden it's just like something cracked, cracked open. And it was so crystal clear here. So here. So when the experience was over, everything dropped, everything collapsed, and the only thing was left was this. And immediately, I look at it, I felt, okay, this is me. This is, <laughs> I'm not apart from this. This is, this is familiar. This is not something new. It was there. It was like from the background, it came all of a sudden to this forefront very, very strongly, very, very powerfully from the core of the being, just whew, like this, it came up. And here, for the first time, I felt there is only one thing in here. All there is is this. There is nothing but this. And that's that's end of that in this body. In this body, all there is is this. This experience was profound because I didn't kept the experience anymore because I was I didn't I tr I didn't chase the experience anymore. The experience it feels like you you come out of this shell. You drop the shell. The shell is not important for me anymore because I got, I got what I wanted out of this. So what I'm trying to say is that the experience in the meditation, it would, that is not important. That's not something that you have to focus on. The focus is that the truth of the being who is aware of the experience all of a sudden reveals itself in the midst of the experience. And the experience wipes away, and you don't even need to remember the experience. It's, it's just throw it out. And but this is the true gem. This is it. It 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 is the truth of the being. I, I am. Yeah, the that I am. It felt like it felt like I am. Hmm. It's just I am. So this stayed there, and I. And when I the experience is over, here I am, I am, and I'm, I am. So, okay. So this goes on a few days. But the that is the unity consciousness he's talking about. The feeling of you know one oneness within, oneness within. But it wasn't oneness without. There was yeah. still a within and without. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there still was this. Me, still, I was seeing myself as a separate body. Yeah, I, I was still referencing this body as me, and then the rest of the world as separate. It was like this. Although there, in here there is no person. Well, the oneness within doesn't refer to your body, does it? It refers to something more fundamental than that. That's true, but it's still some sort of referencing. Some sort of association with association the body. Association was there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Although there is this oneness very strong, it, it, it came up. It was right here, right now. But it's still there is this meanness and this otherness was there. A sense that I here am yes. living this am living so, this oneness and this and that is separate from all, everything exactly. else. Exactly. Right, that right. was there. That was okay. there. Good. So now it was just going on and on. Now this time around when I was meditating, it was not chasing that experience anymore. Mm -hmm. it, that was gone. That you was know, gone. even before that when you were meditating, it didn't sound like you were chasing anything. It sounded like you were just hanging on for the dear life and, and, the, and going along for the ride and it True. was all happening automatically. True, but I was enjoying it. I was, yeah, yeah. I was loving it. I was, uh, you know, there, you know, okay, here it comes. But now, this was gone. This that thing was gone. That was not needed anymore. Somehow okay. it was. It feels like you graduate from that, outgrow okay. from that. That experience does not need to reveal anything for me anymore. It seems like it peeled off. It's like mm -hmm. a, something peeled off. Right. But 
okay, this, I was, ex I was just meditating on myself, as I am this, as this is just amazing, oh my, I am this, I found who I am, I found myself, but it's not, it wasn't complete, I don't know how to explain it, it wasn't complete, you can tell it's not mm -hmm. complete, this is not complete, so, well, because all of this is not that. That's exactly. There is this duality. That right. vision was still duality. Mm -hmm. I see boundaries. I see still boundaries in there. Yeah. Okay. So at the moment, I didn't know that was duality. I just I knew that this something doesn't still fit right. A lot of times, people I think refer to what you're describing as non-dual uh, or as unity, but in fact, it's actually a state of duality. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And here I am also, I'm not following any particular guru, any books, and not, nothing, just mostly experiential. These are all going through, this body is going through all this natural, natural unfolding. Rachel. I was going to ask you that, I don't mean to interrupt your flow, but um, you were saying, I mean, there's, all this stuff has been going on with you for years. You were not inclined to be reading all kinds of books to figure out what was happening? I was, I was reading, but there were no answer in there. You didn't really the find stuff them that I was mixed. No, absolutely yeah. not. They, they're talking about this and that. That is not, this is, I want somebody to explain to me what is going on with me. Yeah, it what didn't relate to your experience. What stage am I? I mean, right. And I, I spoke to someone who bo wrote so many books about mm -hmm. spirituality. He's an Iranian guy. Mm -hmm. I spoke to him and I explained about my experiences. He says, look, I honestly don't know what you're talking about, but, <laughs> but these things that you're saying, there are some names for it. The, yeah. These stages and also the experience that you have, there are names for it. This mm -hmm. is this, this. But all I'm telling you, this is a divine touch. This mm -hmm. is a divine touch. That's the divine is working on himself in this body. Right. So that was going on for a while until, um, Rick, in one, I go for a walk a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. fast walk, that is my really actual uh, exercise. Yeah, good for you. As, <laughs> as I was walking mm -hmm. one time, in the street, and this is a busy road I'm passing. The cars are passing. Here I am going. All of a sudden, there is this stillness that is totally silence, and all of a sudden is embracing everything. Everything is in me. The, the, the trees I'm looking, the cars are passing, and including the body is in me. But I am not it. I'm just looking at it as a distance. And I also notice that I am not walking. The body is walking. That's for sure. For sure. I'm not walking. And I'm looking at the bodies walking in me. The trees are in me. The squirrel passed by. The, that the squirrel has zero distance from me. Mm -hmm. Zero distance. Everything is equidistance to me. Mm -hmm. As an I, as a vision, as a vision, the vision opened up again. Opened up, complete. I, that it, panoramic, panoramic vision. Huh, 360? No let me show you, yes, yes, let me, it's not a 360, now I'm not seeing my back, what right. I'm trying to say is no boundaries, mm -hmm. it is things are in me, but I am not it, mm -hmm. I am embracing them, but I am not, at the same time, I'm not it, I, I see them as an object, the body became totally an object, object, that's it, all there is, is this vision, as a silence, as, as a, as a, subject as a that's the first time in my life I felt love hmm. that is the true love that was the love love is when there is no separation hmm. there's no distance distance disappeared so and then that lasts for a while Rick and then it again closed up hmm. it closed up again I see the duality again the vision was come back duality the next day, opened up, again, closed up, opened up, closed. This lasts for a couple of months until finally, finally stayed just like that, open, 
opened up. When and it opened that, up that last time, did, was there something different about the opening? Or did, was it like no. all the other ones and you expected it would go away, but it just didn't? It didn't go away. It mm -hmm. didn't go. It, it just, it seems that it just it got adjusted. <laughs> like some I want to open up but cannot get adjusted has to I don't know even this is not a this is a vision I cannot say an eye it's not really an it's a vision it's a is a is a uh, invisible vision I try to describe it now sometimes you know it's very hard but that's that's what it is it's like not even a space because the vision is is watching this space is aware of this space it's not in a space so it's a vision and by vision, I don't think you mean, you know, visual. No, like you, no, it, no. Like no. you use, you know, predominantly using this sense as opposed to any other sense. It's you're talking about something more fundamental than that. Some this maybe is maybe level. cognition would be a better word. I don't know. It's a different, different vision. It's different way of looking. Perspective. Perspective, which I know <clears throat> there is this one message from Jesus. I remembered. <clears throat> that he was saying from the childhood the kingdom of God is within. within you but within you not within this right that's not what he's talking about he's talking about you are this and the kingdom is in you mm -hmm. that's what he's talking about mm. now I know what he's saying now I know what he's saying so that message just resonated that's it that's what he's talking about the kingdom of God is within you and also this message from Prophet Muhammad, the one who knows oneself knows God. Mm -hmm. When you know who you are, you know God. That's for sure. That was with me for a long, long time. Now, another message was always I carried from Rumi, if you want me to say it even in Persian, beautiful. Sure. It says, Anon ke talabkar khudahid, khudahid. Birunz shomanist, shomayid, shomayid. It says, those who are looking for God, you are God. It's not outside of you. You are it. You are it. He is emphasizing, you are it. So this, these three words, these three sentences, like a triangle, was with me. Hmm. One who knows himself, yet that's his awakening. If you know who you are, you know God. The kingdom of God is within you. That's the vision. And you are God. So this is, has to be experienced fully, fully resonate with you to know, to, to, to realize what Rumi is talking about. So that was the opening of the vision. Again, the vision now sees unity. It, that duality vision is not there anymore. But, but there was this me still there is a mind in the background trying to understand this and trying to define this somehow and and another tricky part of it was try to be one with it try to be present enough to be one with this okay in other That's, words, it, it wasn't so spontaneous. You had to sort of be trying something or, or you trying. thought you did. Yes. It, there was some little effort going on. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So that is when the contemplation started in me. Hmm. Is there an, a me apart from this that is living here trying to be one with this? I'm not going to give answers. Is that but, true? But yeah. you were asking yourself that. I asked myself this. Right. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Or is that's all there is? This is all there is. Okay? So this me at the very end is trying to become this. I mean, trying to be aware of this. Um, and also, also try to analyze that maybe philosophize that I don't know what was trying to do but somehow this mind was not really uh, surrendered it was not surrendered it was You're awakening happened I knew that I was I knew who I was there is no doubt in my mind that this was it this was the truth that's the only truth exists here it I know it but this mind 
is keep trying to be, be in tune with this or un understand this. <laughs> you know, this was for a while. This was for a while. It was until almost as if almost as if the mind were trying to fit something within its grasp that is actually exceeds its grasp, but it's still trying to get a hold of something. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. This is nothing to get get a hold of. This is how it is. This is how right. it is. Right. But the this mind was trying. The mind was trying. You. This is like. This is this is like. This is nothingness, but everythingness. But mind cannot understand this. So mind in one day I remember I remember I just said I just don't know I know this mind came to the knees I know how it was it was just so so surrendered so humbled mm. so humbled so humbled I cannot tell you how much it was I was in tears did it just happen spontaneously all the time uh, uh, yes, uh, you know. Yes, just, just kind I of a letting go about, that just. You happened. know, this is it because I know this is it. I know what this thing. I don't know what this thing is intellectually, mm -hmm. but I just know it. I know it so much. This is the only real thing exists in here. It's the most powerful thing. The most being existing, shining being. What is that is. So, the mind at this time, I th I felt it's just like, just that. I you know, and and you can tell because this mind that it was constantly trying to become, to become, to become even aware of the truth. You see, that's the tail end of the mind. You really have to watch it. Who wants to be one with this? Who is that one? Me wants to be one with this. Is that me at authentic? That me, you have to watch it very carefully. So, and this, because this awakening happened from within, very powerfully, from deep in, is not something told, somebody point out to that, to me. This is not like, this was not coming from outside. This was so deep inside, came out very powerful here all the time as, as, as the only king of this whole entire continent. So when the king arises, there's nothing else is left in here. There's nobody else in here. There's nobody here other than this. So who is this mind who's trying? So that is the time that this mind just surrendered. Mm -hmm. And after that, Rick, there was absolutely no, nothing to try, nothing to become, mm -hmm. nothing to understand. And also um, in peace, at ease. This mind is liberated. This mind is free, free from becoming at last. I was becoming all my life, Rick. Even in the path of spirituality, I was becoming so kind and so loving. Let's have some unconditional love for everybody, you know. The mind was trying all of that, trying to be non-judgmental. These are the things that mind is trying to become. But you cannot be non-judgmental if you see yourself as a separate sense of self. You can auto you because you automatically see yourself as duality, as du as duality. You see duality. When you see duality, the judgment is gonna be there. So no matter how much you try, you get frustrated. That's why the mind in this path gets so frustrated. It thinks that I have to be good, I have to be non-judgmental, I have to be this and that. None of that is true. None of that is true. Because once you realize the truth as a truth, every thought is more than welcome here. Hmm. There is no such thing. This thought should not be there. I was policing. My mind was policing. This mind should not be there. That's mind should, that is good. This is bad. You so in other words, now you might have thoughts that might be considered judgmental, but that's okay. They just fit in. Because that's not you. You know that is not you. You know who you are. Yeah. See, once but you, you might still have an opinion about Ahmadinejad, for instance, or, absolutely. or this, that, or the other thing. Absolutely. But, but all is well and wisely put. You just sort of, they flow through. Absolutely. You any any mind any 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 idea is welcome. Any emotion is welcome. Mm -hmm. You cannot say, okay, now this awakening happening, it should not be any any kind of sadness in here. 
I should not be sad to no that's not true the sadness arises yeah. but you know who you are you see, you are not going to be a separate sense of self that is, doesn't have any identity so that it grabs that sadness as this is my sadness. So the same thing with the body. The body can get sick. This body is, is getting old. It is getting sick. If you know who you are, you tolerate any pain, any disease, any sickness that is going on in the body very consciously. Mm. Consciously. You'll be very, very aware of this the, everything so, so one way of saying it might be that you're not trying to run the, there's nobody trying to run the show anymore the show's just going on absolutely. And, you, and you're just uh, enjoying it as it goes absolutely <laughs> absolutely and such a relaxed relax mm. no more this, this this is good and bad how I feel am I feeling good am I feeling bad there is nothing this is nothing to do with feeling it's nothing to do it's, it's what you are is is completely beyond feeling any feeling can come and go but you know who you are as long as you know your identity that's the most important thing you have to know who you are and 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 claim that not claim as uh, mentally this is you know this is the only truth exists in here and you know that that's what I am and 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 that's it that's the end of this path when there is no more becoming no so more. in your experience is that I mean, you're not, so you went through all these stages and unfoldments, and in some cases you thought, this is the final thing, I'm going to do yes. this all my life. Are you still going through stages of unfoldments, or has it all come to rest? That is resting. This and is how resting. does this correspond with those seven stages that that um, This is, a, it says, uh, at the end it talks about uh, the fano, fano e fello, that means that, that you, you just fall, you die in God, death, mm -hmm. death of the self, death of mm -hmm. sense of separate self which always there to the last minute trying to be one with the truth try to be one with here be present that that is completely surrendered completely to the knees complete surrender and then once that happened because you have to admit that part of you has to say I am there is there is nothing there is I am nothing that part has to admit that I am nothing that nothingness has to happen first. In other words, drop drops in the ocean, but that drop has to become nothing first. Until, and then once it becomes nothing, then it becomes everything. Hmm. Then, then the whole totality is you. You hmm. cannot become totality from the mantra all of, all of a sudden to this consciousness. You cannot automatically say, I am consciousness. That's not how it works. That part of you, which is a sense, the me, that was here, this, that was a sense of me. There's a sense, that was never real. Never ever real. <laughs> it's never real. If it was real, it, was, it could be here. You know, the only thing is real was this, was this that we are feeling right now. I mean, r r right now, I mean, this monitor, that the way this vision is, this monitor and this body, they both are in me. They are equidistant. The body of that, that body that called Rick and this body is Ellie, these are all, it, both objects, fully. All there is, is one subject, one alone. There is oneness alone by itself. That's how it is. This is the reality of that, the, the whole thing. So you wake up with that. And in this, nothing really happens. Nothing really happens. And there is no sense of self. There is no individual is here. Mm. All there is is this. Because all there is is this presence. We don't have any other timing. There is, even if you're thinking about that, you, that thing, that thought, everything is happening right here in the presence. So the presence of being that is here is the only truth that is. So that is the bottom of that. I mean, because you know that this path ends because when you know who you are that's it now the part of the adjusting and settling this is all again belong to the mind this is a mental game it's not the re reality was always here this reality doesn't uh, is not going to get deepening and any of that the mind gets more and more surrender 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 and dives into the unknown because this mind should say, this is how it happened, although I don't know this at all, but that's the only thing I know there is. That, that's, that has to be so authentic. 
It cannot borrow it from somebody. It has to come from the depth of your being, fully. Now, another thing, Rick, I want to I want to share with you. It's very important. Mm -hmm. This knowing, this knowledge, cannot be transferred from one person to another. The reason what I'm saying because I have been talking to so many people in you know over the phone or sometimes by email and interacting. This is not this was not successful. Although I was a very good teacher in math, I can transfer knowledge. This is not you cannot transfer this. This cannot be transferred. Now, I have a lot of I get a lot of emails, a lot of questions from people that they go to the satsangs and they sit and listen to all this. This is all good because I know the intention of that teacher <coughs> excuse me, uh, has to be very good. He has good <coughs> intentions. They pointing out to the truth <coughs> and you recognize that. Okay? Definitely. So I can bring anybody from the street right now. I can go sit down here, let me show you who you are. I would point out to the truth and they would recognize that. That's obvious because that's your nature. How could you not recognize yourself? That's you. The truth is you. So I can show they can do that. But that is not awakening. So you go home, you go and maybe for a few days and all you feel like that. Oh, you know, but then the whole that that sense of separate self is still there. You know, it doesn't go away. So this person, these type of people, they have to go through all this because the mind has to go through all this so that that, that is the path. So ultimately, this mind would be ready, would be ready to hear the truth when it's said. Okay? If this mind is not ready to hear this, no matter how much you say you are consciousness, you are awareness, you are God, you are Atman, doesn't sink does not sink because this mind is not ready for that to hear it so that's what's happening to these people I get a lot of people like this they they are wasting their time in other words they are in the circle they go to what sense one one class to another one person to another one book to another they're going they want to hear this not to practice it they see in, in Rumi says don't be in a circumference of the circle you need to jump into the center the wise person is to jump out into the center how do you jump by experiencing, when you close your mind, close your eyes, and you go and check and see it for yourself, you need to see it for yourself. You cannot borrow this from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Nobody can induce that to you. Rumi has a story, if, if there's still, still time, I like to share. Oh, plenty, yeah. Rick, Rumi says this, look at this is metaphor of this. He says, if they're in a room that is so dark, imagine this room so dark, they put this huge elephant. And they, they put some whole bunch of people around that, okay? In, it's pitch black. Nobody can see a thing, okay? Now they say, okay, find out what this thing is, okay? The person who's up front, who's touching the trunk, he says, this is the gutter. This is the gutter. Mm -hmm. It's like gutter, okay? The person who's in the back touching the leg says, this is the beam, the beam of the house, mm -hmm. okay? The person who is in the middle touches the top. He says, "This is a, uh, it's a bed," and they start fighting. They start all fighting, and they're so right because what where they're touching, it feels like right, okay. But he says, "Listen to this. How beautiful he says." He says, "In the hands of each individual, each individual, if there is a candle that has been lit." individually then there would be no differences hmm. he doesn't say that if they turn on the light from outside oh everybody can see that that's not what he says he's not saying if somebody knows in here in, in the in the trunk part he can say to other people who are sitting standing in the back who's not seeing this the message because the person who's in the back is see, hearing this Either, either he has to accept it just as, a, as an idea or reject it. Right. So he can't see it. So he said each individual has to lit their own candle. That's in, it doesn't even say that this person who ha has a lit candle has to go to other people and turn on their candles either. It doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. 
he may trigger that. He may say, oh my God, I saw this. Oh my God, it's, 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 it's elephant. And the other people get excited about this so that they can work on it. And whatever happens, you know, naturally, they can see it. They can lit their own candle. But you cannot possibly transfer the truth to somebody else. I know it for a fact based on my experience and based on what the Rumi says. So we have to remember that. No, it's good. So in other words, you have to, you, you have to live it yourself. You, you have can't. to live it for yourself. And there yeah. is, that's why I don't have any classes for this. And a description of it does not suffice as the actual living of it. It's I'm like ha hearing a description of some delicious meal. It's not like eating the meal. No, <laughs> no. Because, you know, people heard about this already. And that's why I don't want to have classes about this. I know this path is very long and difficult. It's not so easy that you hear about this, somebody induce that to you, and then you go home and try to, to be that. You know, people calling me, they say, oh, some, some teacher told me, try to be a uh, watcher. Mm. Just to try, try to be a watcher. Oh, I, I tried to be a watcher for a long time. It was okay. I was in peace. But then I was frustrated. I had to drop it. That was too much, too much effort. It's manipulative. The, yes, because that watcher is a duality watcher already. Yeah. The watcher that you, ha you are at this time, you see me as this separate, and that, Rick, is totally separate. You and me are two, two different people. So what kind of a watching am I practicing here? I'm practicing duality, and that reinforces that sense of me. Right. So that watching is not the watching that we're talking about. I think the watching you're talking about is something which either is happening or it isn't. It's spontaneous. It's not a willful exercise that you kind of do all day long. It's, exactly. it's, it's just, it's, it's it's just watch it's like, it's like breathing. It's just happening. Yes, and yeah. watch it happens from here. Right. This is how you watch, not not like this. Or mm. maybe the eyes is used to connect it to the head. This way you're watching. Now this way you're watching. I don't know how to describe it. So this and or also some people say, oh, there's nobody here. No, no. This is not. A, that's not gonna awaken you. Don't no. waste your time. It's a concept. Right, let me explain to you. I'm a math teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's make an example. Rick, let's say when we were these bodies are born. There is one question, yet problem, has been given to us to solve. Okay, same exact problem. Everybody has to solve that. Let's say you solve the problem. Okay, you got the answer. X equal to zero, which is nothingness, mm -hmm. and X is also equal to infinite, which mm -hmm. is everythingness. Okay, so you got the answer. And then you come to me and you say, you know what? I got the answer. Here, there are two other ones. So give it to, you give it to me. I plug in, I, check, I test this answer into my problem. So x equals to 0, I plug it in, it's working. Isn't that so? x is working, x equals to infinite. I put infinite, I cancel out, rationalize it, it works. But does that mean that I solve this problem? Does that mean that? So now, if I check the answer, it works, you may say something else. As someone who really solved the problem, you may say, you know what? That x equal to 0, that 0, is also equivalent to infinite. See, mm -hmm. zero is equal to infinite. It, to my mind, I cannot comprehend that. That is the part I get caught. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't solve this problem. You solved it. You gave me the answer. So if I sit in the middle of all these people who solve this problem, I have nothing to say. Although I have the answer. I know the answer. And x equal to zero, x is infinite. Even if you, I may remember, OK, they said x is equal to infinite. So equivalent, fine, no problem. But that is not awakening. Please do not waste your time just trying to learn all that and incorporate it into your own life. Try to fit it in. You don't fit in that. This is something like realization. This is not becoming. This is not a study. It's, you know, it, this is not a, like a becoming kind of a thing, trying to fit in that kind of a thing, idea. There's a, so, there's a Tibetan proverb that I said I wasn't going to say anymore because I've uh -huh. said it so many times, but it fits nicely into this. It's, it's a, don't mistake understanding for realization. Don't mistake realization for liberation. Oh, beautiful. That's, <laughs> that does it. That's, that does it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That is the, the liberation part is important. You may realize that somebody noticed, it's just pointed out to you, but that's, that doesn't mean a thing. That doesn't mean a thing. 
people and and then you know what they go to these teachers as a disciples they sit down they have to go to this satsang and next year the next i am not saying not to go to satsang go there this is good for the mind for the mind but that is not enough if that's what you all you're doing, trying to getting the ideas of what they're saying, and uh, you know, try to you know, even they said Buddha said uh, deeds are happen, uh, you know, events are happening, but there's no doer. Yes, that's true, but that is not meant to be for you to go and use that as a practice. Right. That's it's a, not it's a description. It's not a prescription. Exactly. Exactly. Right. The real practice is your own experience you have to see it for yourself like it never happened before and unfortunately one thing that happens at a lot of these satsangs is that the teachers discourage people from actually doing any sort of practice which might result in that experience they say oh a practice is only going to re reinforce the notion that there's someone practicing so don't bother with that you know just, just listen you know to what? me actually someone practicing the ego takes you there yeah. Ego takes you there. That's true. Someone is practicing, but ego dissolves in there. Mm -hmm. That's the part they don't realize that. In this path, ego would burn out. That love I was talking to you, that love, that essence, that experience would burn up the, the, the ego. So now, question, oh, one other thing that I like to share with, very important, is that in order to be awakened to who you are, you don't have to have all these experiences either. Like, Kundalini awakening, if it happens, it happens. But you don't go to someone to try to manipulate your energies. Don't do that. Because that, again, delays this process of realization. In order to realize who you are, you don't have to have Kundalini awakening. Now that I know, or now that I went through all this experience, even that person said, well, use that as a, that is, was just, to me, is a trick for the mind, honestly. It's not, you don't need that. And also that love experience that I have, I told you, love affair, that also doesn't need. Let me tell you why. Because when you meditate, when you close your eyes in that silence, when the mind quiets down, in that silence, that's, if you, if you really attend, pay attention, this silence, that isness, that existence of silence is pointing out to the truth. Okay, now people are mistaken, mistaken, with actual truth with the silence, the silence of being, that emptiness, is the shadow of the truth. Mm. It is not the truth. Because the truth doesn't have qualities. Is that one way because of saying it? Because the truth it? is observing that. Mm -hmm. It cannot be that. Right. The truth is what is observing that this is very very delicate people think okay this is what I have all the time I get emails they say oh I know I'm consciousness but when I go talk to people I lose myself and now I have to come back to is tap in okay you don't know the truth you don't know the truth because if you know the truth the truth has to be there you have to be there in order to have that interaction the truth is not any state, any specific state of mind. Right. People think that when I come to the present and in silence, that is the truth. That is the reflection of the truth. That is the aroma that arises from the truth. Mm. But that is not the truth. Truth is always here, whether there is a mind or no mind. Mind can come and go. Emotion can come and go. This does not come and go. It's always here, ever present. That's a very important thing. See, there is no such thing that I go and I, I forgot who I am and I come back. That's, you don't know who you are. Because the attention, see, the attention may go to the mind. But when this awakening fully happens, when the mind surrenders, okay, the mind is liberated. This mind, the attention automatically comes back. Automatically, you don't have to put any effort. That attention, it comes back here. Also by itself, there is no effort. It's effortless that comes back. It's not that I have to remember that attention has to be here. It's not like that. And that mind that was trying to become, and those thoughts of self-seeking, they're automatically vanished. They, they dissolve. So this mind, is not that this mind is a quiet mind, it's not saying anything, there's nothing going on. This mind is just in service. It just 
right here at your service. And this mind realized what is the king? What is the king here? And listening to that it becomes a tool really ah, I was gonna say that word I was gonna yes. say it's a tool <laughs> yes that's that's the tool just like the way that the way this arm is right so it's in my control now it's mm -hmm. in in the control of this so that's the end of that so yeah, there is no such thing I'll have to bring my attention back and that's that's another question I get a lot what is it, what let is me life? just say I mean wouldn't you agree that if it were something that you had to have by Putting your attention there. In other words, if if put if your attention were ha, had to be responsible for having that, then it would necessarily be very um, intermittent. You know, because you be, be by its very nature, the attention doesn't stay in one place. It, exactly. It, it, it goes here. It goes there according to what we need to do. And so, you know, th this is more of a foundational rock bottom thing, which is irrespective of where the attention may or may not be. Absolutely, absolutely. The attention goes when it's needed. Yeah. Goes out when it's needed and then comes back. It's not going to stay there like right. the way it was. And then trying to self seeking, like I have to now become something and this get credit and all of No, that I think when it's done, the work is done, this comes back right here and mm -hmm. that's it. So, and, and that's why, see, the truth is so ordinary. When attention comes back to the ordinariness, it becomes extraordinary. Mm. See, that is the gem. This is the gem. You have this mind has to trained to be trained to respect to honor this, as, as as the way the way it is. See, mm -hmm. a mind which never meditated, never is not comfortable with this silence, with this stillness. This mind, even if you tell them what is the truth, this mind would not accept that, but because this mind is not comfortable with the silence. This this exists. This the aroma of this of the truth. So the mind sees that but the mind bounces back to sleep mm. that's what happens in people so I work with a lot of people I thought that they understood they, they just got it got it <laughs> not mentally but I thought that, you know they realize what I'm talking about they, they I felt that like a rubber band you just pull them they, they feel like they're there but the next time they call they're exactly bounced back mm. it's, uh, it's amazing it's so disappointing so yeah. what would you say to them to prevent that rubber band uh, phenomenon? I would say meditate. I would say just you need to go, go within. Go mm -hmm. within. Just jump in and see it for yourself what we're talking about. In the meditation, again, not that experience. Those love ex does not have to happen. That silence is talking to you. Mm. When there's nothing else in here, something is here as observing this silence. Now, in your own case, meditation was almost involuntary. It was spontaneous. It, yes. you, sort, you You sort of had no choice almost. Yes. Um, and, you know, people hearing your story might think, well, she's special because even since she was a young girl, she was having this recognition that there's no one there. And then as she went through life, she was just almost overtaken by these, uh, you know, periods where she would lie down and all this stuff would happen to her. But in my case, I'm, say, I'm speaking as someone, uh, you know, I'm busy, I, don't, I, I sit and try to meditate, nothing happens, it's boring, you know, so it's like I'm not like her and mm -hmm. therefore, you know, I, maybe I can't get this like, like she did. Um, that's, that's possible, that's possible and to be honest with you, this path is not for everyone. Rick. Hmm. I'm not saying it as an as an, from the ego, from the mind. Mm -hmm. This path is you need that number one, that burning desire that I just mentioned to you. Mm. It has to be number one priority of you. Honestly. <clears throat> if this is your first priority, then you can do it. Then then this opens up for you. But if you if this is in your list of the to do list stuff, and probably at the bottom of that, if I have time I'm gonna do meditate and now I have to take care of my kids and my husband so go ahead and do it that is your path you're not supposed because this is not as I said it, it's not meant to be it's not meant to be that every single being uh, realize that it's, it's only for the beings that are so uncomfortable with this format this play see my play was not that much of a horrendous play but still was not fitting I knew this is not it. I, I just, for, for a fact, I knew this is not it. So, so something pulling me 
to find out what it what what is the truth and what pulled me is just this way i went this way this way this way when, when i hear a story like yours i think well i mean i believe in reincarnation for instance i don't know if everybody mm -hmm. does but you know i think all right well you know obviously she built up a lot of she built up a head of steam in previous lives you know she built up a momentum and so in this life even as a young girl there was that pull uh, and there were these experiences, and she just picked up where she left off. Like <clears> it says, it says in the Gita, you know, Arjuna says, "Well, what happens if a person's on the path and they die?" Our, our Krishna just says, "Well, they pick up where they left off, and they, you know, and they're they're born in a family of yogis, or they're they're inclined to, to do this sort of thing." But you know, my response to that would be, "Well, it's 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 always a good time to start. I mean, even if you don't have the burning fire." Uh, and you don't have the, spon the spontaneous ability to meditate as you have, uh, start where you are. And there's, al there's always something you can do, and you know, maybe um, and that little, <coughs> little spark will, will grow into a fire. Absolutely, but uh, you mentioning you mentioned about reincarnation, you mm -hmm. know, that's a belief. The mind believes in that. It's a belief, you know, when, I, it may be wrong, but who knows. When you know the knows? truth, uh -huh. uh, correct. When you realize the truth, mm -hmm. okay, you will notice there is only one thing in here there is no individual soul exist in here so that it would go back and try to reincarnate you know it for a fact it's not a belief now you know there is this all there is is this right this is it there is no in because there is no individuality because there is no individual that's the fairness of this truth in each body mind that's the fairness if Honestly, I, I think that if this, that, that was the case, if that the story is right, so then people are born so differently, so, so, so different background and different uh, advantages. Mm -hmm. I, that's not how I see it. I see this oneness, one unbroken wholeness is functioning throughout these bodies. These are objects. This is not a person here. This is only an object. So if this oneness is functioning here, what is left out? What is going on? Nothing. If in a body drops, th this I, I, I don't go anywhere. This is what I am. Always. Always. It, it doesn't come and go. This is not something come and go. This is not something um, evolves. It doesn't evolve. This whole game of becoming and enlightenment, and this is all for mind. This is a mind of, it's a mental game. Because the truth is never, ever changes. That's yeah. how I experience. That gets us into the whole levels of reality thing. And, you know, ultimately, there is no universe. I mean, not only no, no reincarnation, not only no mind, not, but there's no body, there's no universe. It's all, you know, a physicist will tell you, boil it down to its essence, and there are no atoms, there are no molecules, there are no compounds, there are no organs, all that in its essence is unmanifest you know Unmanif yes, uh, yes. but you know if we give any credence whatsoever for the sake of you know th there's that term mythia which I heard you mention in one of your talks uh -huh. uh, which, which means dependent reality you know, right. and so you know and the example often used is that of a pot um, we see a pot we put water in it we put beans in it we use it as a drum there seems to be a pot but really it's only clay there is no pot you That's know true. And so, you know, for the sake of relative interaction and life and so on, we can acknowledge the, the sort of virtual reality of all these levels and stages and evolution and all that stuff. But ultimately, it's all just a fabrication. Exactly. And, and, and it's a miracle fabrication. It's a yeah. miraculous fabrication. Don't forget. I mean, uh, you see, this game of duality, the way, you see, nothing is happening here. Right. And, <laughs> and nothing ever happened. Right? So now, watch how things are happening look at this it's just mm -hmm. such a miraculous way and everybody six, over six billion people believe that something in here somebody is here and something is happening mm -hmm. isn't that beautiful yeah that's a miracle so that that you believed in this in this dream okay but when you wake up in the background you see the truth Right. But then you play, this time you play differently. It's fine that you don't take it seriously. You know this is a play. For a fact, you know this is not reality. This is just a play. Just a play. It's not even a game. Game has a winning and losing and, oh, I, I lost in here. That's not even a game. Mm -hmm. I am telling you, everyone, this is just a play. When you realize that, that's, that's, that's the end of that. So mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, when, when you... When they didn't know anything about the moon many, many years ago, they thought that moon has its own light. Mm -hmm. 
So they worship, some people worship moon and oh, full moon, beautiful. Then they find out that moon does not have any light. My moon is inert. Okay? So the light comes from the, oh, from the sun. But you know it now. But you still you go out and you enjoy a full moon. Mm-hmm. Still you write a poetry for the moon, don't you? You're not going to yeah. stop doing that. But that is the miracle of that. You see, you see what is the truth in the background. Mm. But yet you play the, 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 the game. You play exactly. this just game. And that, that's how it is. Um, there was a story about Shankara. He was tested by some king you know, who, who wanted to see if he was the real deal. And so as he was coming up to the king's palace, the king let loose a, a wild elephant. And the elephant came running down and Shankara quickly climbed up a tree. Uh-huh. And, and then the king said, ha, you must be a phony. Why would you, if, if it's all an illusion, why would you bother to climb the tree? And Shankara said, oh, the illusory elephant chased the illusory me up the illusory tree. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's not that it's not real. It is real. This, I'm touching it. See, mm-hmm. this is for now. It it's, is and it it's, isn't. It's so temporary. You, you see things as objects. You mm-hmm. know, you don't, the, anything that I see and touch I know that is not ultimate truth. Right. But for now, this it's is myth- this is just a play. It's mythia. It's Leela. Yes, mythia. So mm-hmm. that that if one that is needs to be realized mm-hmm. from fully within. Another question, uh, Rick, I want to share with you. A lot of people say that. Um, so, what is life after awakening? After uh, this awareness, nothing. Life goes on. There is no specific, people think they have this image in their minds that it has to be, these type of people have to have a specific day, way they walk or talk or eat or they kind of a lifestyle. None of that. This life co- goes on as, as a liberated mind. The mind that is not anymore seeking for the truth and trying to become God. End of the story. We are talking about... Uh, this common question that I get that what is the lifestyle of someone who right, I right. Mean, it, we just said it's very simple it's just the same way it was it's very ordinary you will be amazed how ordinary it is but yet as I mentioned it's extraordinariness mm. in that ordinariness that you have to find this what I'm talking about you have to be there to realize what I'm talking about there is nothing missing. That's how it feels. It feels that it is, it, it, this is whole and complete and is unfolding itself. There is no agenda. Don't have anything. You don't need to be or do a plan or anything the way that you know I was. Always has some agenda or some plan. There is no such thing. Allow things comes to you. Mm. You don't chase things. That, that's, how, that's how it's happening in here. That's the only change that happened, if, if there is any, in, in here. Um, this mind is free from becoming. It's so in peace with not knowing, not knowing this. See, you, this mind needs to jump into this unknown and be trusting it, trusting it, trusting it. Always. And then everything, un- everything just unfolds naturally. Absolutely. Yeah. Abs- that trust is important. You know, when, when I'm asking people, if you experiencing things, just pay attention to the watcher who is experiencing it, not just the experience itself. Because if you chase the experience, that's going to take a long time. Again, long time for you, this realization. Just before you meditate, then you close your eyes. Be aware of that awareness who is always here. Be aware of the peace, which is always here. And then whatever happens, just pay attention to that. And notice that this silence is pointing out to something which is always here. Mm-hmm. Always here. And, and you need to trust that. See, that trust is very important. Uh, this awakening, once it's happened from the core of the being, it's, it's so sh- self-shining. You don't need to do anything. It's just so here. But the more important thing is that if the mind says, oh, this is so simple, this is so ordinary, that should not be it. It has to be something extraordinary and esoteric. Or as this lady said, the love and this, 
that's no good. You, then that takes you to, again to the journey. So I'm emphasizing one more time, the, in the, during meditation, nothing necessarily needs to happen. I think it's good you're emphasizing that because some people just are naturally wired such that they have kind of flashy experiences and all, uh, but most people aren't. And they're, and the people who aren't often sort of look to those who are and think, well, it's, it's not happening to me. It's I'm not. missing because I'm not having flashy experiences, so I must be so far away from it. Uh, right. And I think it's good to, as you're doing, to kind of reassure people that it's not necessarily going to be that way. And it's not going to be for them the way it was for you necessarily, but exactly. it could be j just as legitimate. Absolutely. It's so unique for every, every being. And every, I know for a fact that in, if, in every body-mind uh, entity, they, because they have different background and culture and everything else that coming from, the way that this thing blooms up is so different and unique. That's the beauty of it. Uh, this truth does not want to copy. Does not want to copy. I know for a fact. Does yeah, I mean, if God loves anything, it's variety. I mean, yes. look, look at the universe. It's just yes. So, yes. Look at look at the plant kingdom and the animal. Ki everything is, you know, infinite variety. Absolutely. So, so <laughs> there is no two, even two twins if they decide to do that. It's not going to be look alike. It's yeah. so, It's going to be so different. So just and and also knowing that you are already that. You see, this is like a circle, you're going, starting, and then you turn around, you go back to the same exact point, mm -hmm. then you circle around, same exact point, point A, and that, then you turn around, you come back to that point, it's going to be still point A. This is so important to know, you are already there, but you are, there's a whale in there, that this, remember that bigger I told you, that they dress you in that, that bigger, you know, outfit, bigger. Yeah, yeah. yes, and now, even the, this veil is just just removed. Just veil. Removed. I see you're saying veil. veil. I thought, I thought yeah. you were saying whale, like the no, big. The veil, no, no, <laughs> that you know, that bigger is wearing. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. When that is removed, that all there is is you. That nothing. There is no becoming here. This is already. You are already that. But so how would you reconcile the notion that on the one hand you're saying know that you are already that with what you said earlier which is that it's not an intellectual concept and, right. and you can't know it really by just hearing somebody saying it such as you're saying it right That's now. How would you reconcile those two things? What's to stop people from somebody just walking around saying I'm already that when they don't really realize it? That is a very, very good question. I'm so glad you asked that. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. Rick. Excellent. You know, This message is not for someone that is in the beginning of this path. I gave three or four different messages throughout this whole entire lecture. So for someone who's beginner, I would say just go within. Go within. Discover the truth yourself. And every answer is here. And you would okay. advocate some sort of meditation for that uh, uh, person. That's the only thing it worked for me. For this body mind, for this right. body. This body needed to go to this cocoon. Okay. Okay. So just this worm has to just put this cocoon around itself and then stay there stay there, stay there, and then all of a sudden open up and then fly out. That's mm -hmm. the way this, this body wanted to do. But if you have some other way you think, because there's not only one way, there's, all, that, there's, there's not one way, there's that six, million, six billion ways to, to do this. Let's, mm -hmm. let's put it this way. But if your path, if you think you're comfortable with meditation, and that is pretty much what all of Iranian Sufis and mystics they are mentioning. Rumi at the end of every poem, it says in uh, Koliyat Shams, it says Hamush. Hamush means silence. Mm. Silence. Silence. Keep saying that. But they, they don't introduce any specific methodology of the silence. How you do that. You know, there are so many different ways of meditation. Mine was not any specific way. Not watching the breath or any of that. It was mostly be aware. Aware of what is come and go. Not even quieting the mind. Because mind quiets down on its own. You don't need to force it. Okay, so very important. Okay, even in this path, there is so many people say, "Oh, I have to keep myself quiet, quiet." That, that's not what it is. The awakening is not about a quiet mind. You awaken to the truth of of who you are, and the mind can come and go, and there is nothing wrong with that. And the emotions are come and go, and it doesn't have to be any specific emotions. It doesn't have to be always joyful, blissful. It's not like that. It's not like that because this body is conditioned. This body 
has gone through so many things in their DNA and all that. So let the body just whatever arises in the body, it would arise. As long as you know who you are, doesn't matter what's happening in this body. What so kind that's, of that's the advice you would give for a, a relative beginner. Absolutely. Okay. And in the middle, the, the people who are in the middle, mm -hmm. they are in the middle, you need to come into some sort of a contemplations. Like this I that I'm talking about, okay? Is there an I in here apart from the memory? There are memories here. Go investigate. Is there an I apart from this memory exist that is claiming all these memories? It's claiming. There's no doubt about that. Whatever happens in the mind is happened. But is that true that there's this I in here? That so a sort of a self-inquiry, you're absolutely. saying, for the intermediate people. Yes, and also, is this this I keep saying that I have to be the, I am so unco I'm so conditioned. I have to uncondition myself. Okay, go and find out if this I is an authentic I. Hmm. Is this I real? These are all questions I have to ask myself. And how does I a person say, find that out? Just close your eyes, go and search. Look within. where is this I? Show yeah. it to me. Close. It. Very simple. Is this eye here? Mm -hmm. Is this air? Show it to me. Show me. Where is it? You see, there's nobody here. There is in this. And also, this is very important. When you say I, immediately if you you go into the mind and in the history, okay? I when you say I is in this minute who you are. In this, it's always in the presence that we have. This is the only time there is. In the presence of here, who am I? If you don't go to the mind, if you don't go to the mind, because the mind has stories, so therefore that sense, separate sense of self, has, is there and, 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 and as, as an illusion, and have that story. So this mind is not authentic. The mind wants trying to keep himself quiet. I have to keep my mind quiet. See, I am watching this uh, this sentence right now. I am as an observer watching. I have to keep myself quiet bring my mind over here. I have to be in the present moment. Who is saying that? You don't have to, but you're, you're saying this as though, as, as someone who might say that, right? Someone one might say that, yes. This yeah. is, if, if they say, I have to be in the present moment, who is this I? Right. Because as presence that you are, you don't need to be present. Who wants to be present? <laughs> See, these are the good questions. Ask mm -hmm. yourself, you know, the presence that you are does not need any of that. Who is the, pre, the, the that that me that is trying to be is not authentic? Right. You go and see that. So this is for the middle people, and the people who are at the tail end. Okay, they have to jump, 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 jump. Just just this drop has to drop. That means that if you really really know that you are this awareness, this existence that is here, and you are totally one with that is not you are apart from that the mind has to surrender surrender your mind has to value this and trust this this mind has to know this is all there is admits that I don't know how to say it I just just melt into this was that a choice for you or did it happen I was just happened spontaneously and you had when it happened you, that, it's not, that yeah. was a tr that was a little bit of effort because a little bit of was, a choice yes it was choice because at that time the truth was here but this mm -hmm. mind keeps keeps trying to become that again it still wants to be one with that and be away pay attention to that and just be with that that's kind of it as it's very and very you know very mild, very mild. Vision. So you just you recognized that you were doing that, and you just kind of voluntarily gave up the effort. Yes, one day it happens, mm -hmm. just dropped. Yeah, that. you just felt like enough. That's it. There mm -hmm. is nothing. You realize that this cannot be known, mm. but it can be lived. Mm. You can dance it. You can dance it, but you cannot describe this. Yeah. You know, you know it. You live it. You live it, you, but you cannot describe it. You cannot describe this. This cannot be talked about. You, you cannot talk about the truth. The moment you talk about it, it's not the truth anymore. Right. It's not the truth anymore. 
So you can go sit in front of the, a lot of the teachers and they talk about it. Absolutely, they point into it, they mention it, but talking about it does not cut. It just does not satisfy you. It's not awakening you. Right. So if you're just thinking, using them and bringing home and mind thinks, oh, okay, I know I am aware. A lot of people, I get you know, phone calls, oh, I, am, I know that I am awareness. I know that I am not this body mind. But if whenever there is a but in there, I know something is not. There is no but. If you know who you are, you, that's it. You know it. Like, for example, if right now I ask you, Rick, are you hungry? Answer me. Just anything. Uh, well, I, I, actually, I'm not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> how, do you know how do you know that? Because that's my experience. I, that's okay. the way I feel. I don't feel hungry. I had breakfast. I'm okay. But can you prove it to me? Just let me, let me see how it is. Like I don't know if I could prove it. Um, right. Is that needed to be proved? No, because it's my knowledge. It's okay. my it's my experience, you know. Exactly. And, that that's know. the same way. The same way with that. The way you know yourself. It, right. That's the same exact way. You know this. You don't have to prove it. You know it. It's it, very important. This knowing is not, and that not knowing that comes from the mind. It's a, it has a wisdom behind that. That mm. that not knowing is is a surrender not knowing. When I was a six-year-old girl, that not knowing was scary not knowing. Mm. That is not not knowing needed to know, have to know. It's just something so puzzled. I really have to know that. There's a huge difference between these two not knowing. Huge. Although both of them are not knowing. Both of them was the same experience. But the one was just a not knowing who started a... A, a, a path, a, a desire, a burning desire. The other not, not knowing completed this desire. Hmm. Completed, although it's not knowing. How could you not know still? But you, you be in peace. How, how could that be? That's the miracle. You've surrendered to it. Fully. Yeah. That has to happen. That has After to happen. After a long and winding road, you yes. surrendered yes. to it. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think things can't happen till they happen. You know, they can't happen till they're ready to happen. Absolutely. You, you couldn't have, as a six-year-old girl, you didn't have a choice to somehow be like this now. You yeah. had to sort of go through all those things sequ sequentially or, or, I don't know, can't say have to, but that's the way it happened. And yes. you didn't appear to have any big choice at any stage of the game. Right. You just went from one thing to the next and then, you know, finally here you are. Exactly. And what I also want to say is that Although I didn't have any teacher and guru, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it shouldn't have. As right. a matter of fact, they can really, if the, if the teacher is really knowing the truth, can help you in the right place. Because they see you, in the way, what, where you stand, where you are right now, they can guide you through that. But they cannot transfer you the knowledge. This right. knowledge is individual. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't have that, but I'm, I'm saying that you have to do your own investigation also. So, the, so that's why what, what I do is I, I don't have classes like that because I really do not want to talk about the questions and the only question you need to have, one question. That's a solid goal question. And what is that? Who am I? Who am I? That's the only question I want to hear. If I hear something else, I cannot go along with that. Because these questions are being answered by other teachers. Let these people go and to, uh, you know, answer their questions, you know, and, you know, get the answers, whatever answers. They, once they are at the tail end of themselves, they, there's absolutely nothing else they can do. When, once this mind is at the tail end of this rope, then you can contact me. <laughs> then you can contact me. Because I, I don't, that, that's the only way. That's the only way. The, um, and I, I, I bend for you backwards, and that's for free. There is no donation. I don't live my life like this. Thank God I have a good life. I don't need to get donations or get you know, any of that. I do this for the humanity. I just want this message to go around, and people, if that resonates with you to, totally, you can contact me, and I see where you are. And if you are in the beginner, I would tell you if you're in the middle or if you're at the end. But I know there are some people who are at the end, they're struggling so badly in, at the end. That at the end people who have to jump, I, can, I think I can, I can help them with the mind, not with the awakening. 
the awakening is something with, from within. It has to happen from the core of your being. But the mind is not necessarily surrenders to that. You know, mind it still wants to play the game. So that part, definitely I can help. And then also I have to tell you, out of all these people I talk to and, help, and try to help, I did not, honestly, it didn't work out the way I wanted. But there are two people in my life that they were so ready to hear this. And I have to mention, one is my son. He's only 21. And he told me that, he, he told me that, Mommy, when I was up to 10 years old, I see myself as a vision. A vision. Ah. A vision. The same vision. Chip off and the old block, as they yes, say. Yes, <laughs> that's what happened. Right, and, he was and he was explaining about it. He, he, exactly, exactly mm. that's what it was. And so I pointed out to him the awareness, the existence that he is. So he knows he's aware of that. He's aware of the awareness, but he's not fully surrendered because the ego, the set, separate sense of self is still there. You can see. Mm. So he acknowledged that because I point out to that. But he has, he has to go through this path of complete completeness complete mm. surrender and that so that's one which is very easy and the other one was my sister she oh. is uh, my sister is in uh, Hawaii and she lives there and um, she all day long she, she was a meditator she, all day long mm. in the beach and at home long time so as I was talking to her over the phone and I point out to the point to the awareness to the existence absolutely hmm. bingo she says, oh my goodness, of course, of course, <laughs> you know, she was just shouting and she mm. was happy. So that kind of readiness, you know, you, if I, this is not a message that every ear, every mind can hear. See, this message right now, if the people are listening, there are certain group of people, they can definitely, definitely hear this. And, and they, oh my goodness, of course, of course. But there are some people who hear this, but they don't understand, they don't comprehend. That mind is not ready for this, for to hear this. So, therefore, there's a whole bunch. That's why these classes are difficult, because there are so many variety of group of people sitting here. It's not, you know, in, in the same level. So, mm. whatever you're saying, it hits some people, it doesn't hit other people. It's just so, the energies and everything is not really uh, the way it's supposed to. So. I definitely say if you want to go there, go ahead, but just do your own homework. Do you have to do it on your own? This is something it's like it's like resurrecting. This is this needs some sort of effort. Not effort mentally from this body. It has to happen here. And so uh, have that in mind and do not mistake the real truth with the silence. The real truth is not just the silence of the mind. Mm. It's not just this stillness and being. You are close, very close. But somebody has to point out to you the actual truth. What is the truth in here? And that is so self-shining. When people, if, if somebody is aware of that and fully that and conf has such confidence and such beauty and joy and energy comes out of them, so when you see that, if it resonates with you, you say, oh my God, this, this is the kind of a being I like to interact. I like, this person can just definitely help me. And, and uh, that, that's, that's my suggestion. That's my suggestion, that's, that's it. Um, other than that, um, I just know, I just want to say that this is, although it's a long way, but it's very well worth it. It's worthwhile. Because there's a difference between you as a separate self of self living this life not knowing who you are, but you as this whole totality knowing who you are. Mm. It's a huge difference. Huge difference. Huge. And I would and I would say that even if it is a long way every stage of the path is rewarding so it's not like nothing's happening nothing's happening nothing's happening and then all of a sudden boom it's like you know there's some kind of reinforcement as you go along absolutely but, absolutely as I said that's why he said I thought has the seven steps it's right reinforcement is like you going from the stage to a stage and stage and 
it's it's unfolding. I, you know, mm-hmm. it's just getting it's cooked up. I don't know how it's, it's like baking. Something is baking. Something mm-hmm. is just unfolding and getting ready and and are finally blooms. It's not finally blooms like that. And and that's it. Once it's bloomed, done. <laughs> End of the story, Rick. There is no more, no more becoming. Yeah. Mind is free. This mind is not anymore looking for searching for things and uh, desires. Those kind of desires that mind has, gone. And of course, what you're saying now kind of clashes with the popular notion these days that, oh, you shouldn't think that it's somewhere in the future and that there's some path that you're going to go through and that it's event- you're eventually going to arrive at some goal because that just, that just gets you out of the present and yada, yada. Um, I mean, maybe on some level that's true, but uh, also I think as your whole story has illustrated, it's not true. And, and there can very well be an, an, an unfoldment that appears to take place in time, even if there's no time, and yes. a realization that finally dawns that, uh, that may appear to take place at a certain time, even though ultimately there is, you know, it's, all, it's, all, it's all always been there and, and so on and so forth. It's the old paradox thing. Very true. And, and just remember, when we say path, People think, oh, path means from point A to point B. Right. That's not what we're talking about. I just said, you are in the same circle. You end up with the same exact spot. So that's not from point A. It's a point A to point A. Mm. But it's this way. It's not this way. Mm. So there's a difference. This way. Do you follow what I'm saying? It yeah. feels this way, this mm-hmm. way, always here, here. Everything happens here. It seems like everything happens at the same time. Here. Right. This way, things are happening this way. You see, that's the reality. The, the, the illusion of the mind, it seems like things are happening horizontal. Mm-hmm. It's not horizontal. It's everything is here. And everything is happening here. But happening is not, I'm not saying happening. It's not, I don't know how to describe it. It's just so hard to sometimes. Ultimately, all of these happenings are nothing. They end up with nothing. There's nothing happening. I mean, right now, all of these talks that we have, everything, that came back to nothing, to nothingness. So eventually, ultimately, nothing is happening. So mm-hmm. that is what I'm talking about. You are, the, the function of you in this path is here, here, here. It's not some future kind of a thing is going to happen. No, this is like unfolding in here. The mm. truth unfolds itself to itself, by itself. Excellent. That's yes, like, there's a verse in the Gita which says exactly that. Um, there's also a beautiful T.S. Eliot poem I'm reminded of here, which is, I can't quote it exactly, but it's something about coming back to where we started and realizing the place for the first time. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Mm. Coming back to what we started exactly that mm. that means nothing has to improve in here that you are that already you are that see again this message is for not beginners again you are not that that you are already you notice that oh my goodness there is nothing to become absolutely nothing absolutely nothing to become mm. because this mind was so into this so into this now this here there is nothing and everything arises from this nothingness. See, you, it just it just arises. Like all this talk that you hear, like oh my God, this is just coming out of this, coming out of this, and it's so powerful. It's so energetic. You know, people feel that energy. It's not just just some learned stuff that you know somebody's tell, talking about. You feel the energy that comes from this talk. It has a power behind that. So it's, it's, people notice that. It's mm. just noticeable. It's very powerful. And that is what I'm seeing in that body right now. Mm. I mean, this is the same exact thing, talking to itself. There is only one. This is only alone. And another thing, that sense of se- false security that this me has, me and my God, that is gone. Mm. That is gone. In, and re- replaced, I would suggest, it's by all, real security. <laughs> real security is all there is, is this. Mm. There is no me. You have to be very mature 
this mind has to be very mature to surrender to this. It has to be maturity. They have to have, you have to have to stand up for this truth and, 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 and claim it and knowing it and knowing that is all there is. So this maturity has to be there. That readiness to hear this mm. has to be there. You cannot just know this and then go and say, oh my God, I'm God, and talk to God. Talk to God, conversation with God. You cannot do that. There is no two in here. There is no you, there is no God, there is no somebody else. There is no any of that. All there is is this. This is all there is. And that's the end of that. So that would be, that is what it is. It's very powerful. You read, mind completely trusted this, this relies on this, although it's, it's not tangible. Although you cannot do this, right. but it's so here. Beautiful. Well, I could talk to you all day. Uh, but I probably better not. <laughs> but this is beautiful. I've really benefited from this conversation. Um, I'd say more so than many of the conversations I have. I, it's really kind of resonated with me, hit home to a deep, uh, deep level. So I really appreciate it. And um, appreciate maybe we'll, maybe we'll do another one sometime. Absolutely, absolutely. Is, is there As any sort of? Fact, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, Rick. I'm trying to write this down. I put okay. it in writing. Mm -hmm. And um, and then again, the whole path and the whole thing. So when mm -hmm. the people read that, they see, oh my God, there is this way of doing, unfolding. I am doing that. So within the next month or so, I'm just putting some some stuff in writing. And I would love to share that with you. Oh, I'd love to read it. Future. Are you yeah. turning it into an actual book or are you just going to put it on your website or something? In a website. As I mentioned to you, I don't yeah. want to create a business out of this. That is my, that's how it comes from here. Right. I don't want to have a book. I don't want to have people have to buy this book. In this path, mm -hmm. Rick, you don't have to pay a dime. Right. Nothing. You can turn it you into a, a PDF on, uh, that people can download. Absolutely. And, yeah. I'm going to put it in PDF and put it on in my website. But I definitely like to talk to you about this again because I'm sure that a lot of, I get a lot of emails talking. People get back to me and again, some more question comes up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I love to do that here, and like, like here so that that would clarify. You know, this has to be clarified with so many people. Right. People are confused. Maybe what we could do is, you know, after you've written the thing, uh, send it to me and I'll read it. And uh, okay. then you could also accumulate a list of the kinds of questions that people are submitting. Right. And um, also <coughs> on my website, people will submit questions when they hear this interview. Yes. Um, and let me actually conclude by explaining that. Um, there, you know, this interview is posted on batgap.com, B-A-T-G-A-P, which is an acronym for Buddha at the Gas Pump. And it's also on YouTube, and it's also a podcast, and and so on. Um, but each time I post a new interview, uh, there's a little sort of discussion group that often springs up around this particular one, each particular one. And sometimes people get off on tangents and talk about all kinds of things. Although we try to, we have a general comment section for that. We try to kind of encourage people to stay focused on what mm -hmm. this particular interview is about. So. Um, that will be this will be posted there and uh, if you have questions for Ellie or questions that you'd like to discuss among yourselves please go there and you'll find that and um, also if you'd like to be notified each time I post a new interview there's an email sign up thing on the website where you'll just get you know, on the average one email a week announcing each new interview I don't um, sell the email list to anything or <laughs> you won't start getting spam. <laughs> uh, so please do that if you wish. Um, and I guess that's about uh, Oh, and of course I will have a, you know, a link to Ellie's website there and so that you can go there, read what she's offering, and get in touch with her if you like, but only if you're advanced. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not excluding everybody. Honestly, I know, I'm, no. I'm just joking. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but uh, anyway... So that's a good conclusion. So I, I really appreciate having had uh, this conversation with you, and we'll have another one. Um, and the next interview is Gangaji. So she'll be coming up Tuesday night. So thank you, everyone, for listening or watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Okay.